Hey guys, it's Crystal and we have a massive unboxing today. I'm super excited to check out the new 2023 Mac lineup. We have the long awaited M2 Mac mini, an M2 Max MacBook Pro, and a couple other surprises too, but let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. little Mac mini. So here it is, same design, same chassis, and I know people are hoping for a redesign, but the silver lining here is that the base model dropped from $699 to $599 now, and it's even more affordable if you have that education discount. So with that same design, this is what we have ports-wise. Power, gig ethernet, two Thunderbolts, HDMI, two USB-As, and a headphone jack. Let's take a look at the accessories. There's not gonna be a whole lot. Here we have our power cable. And even with that same design, one of the nicer things about having a Mac mini is that the power is in the chassis and you don't gotta deal with a big bulky power brick, just this single cable. From there, we have our documentation and of course, the big Apple sticker. It's pretty big. Now let's check out the new M2 Max MacBook Pro. And I'm also really excited for this one because I use an M1 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro as my everyday personal computer. So this is gonna be a pretty great comparison. And honestly, I've been on the fence as to whether I should upgrade or not. And truthfully, if I didn't do this for a living, I probably wouldn't, but I'm still really curious to see how this stacks up. Here we go. It looks so big, you know, when you use a 14 inch every day, you, when you look at a 16, it's, it feels humongous. Design wise, this is exactly the same. The only new thing here is those new chips. We have our ports on the side here, MagSafe power, two Thunderbolts, headphone jack, HDMI, Thunderbolt, and our SD card slot. Accessory time, let's take a look. We have here our MagSafe cable. And a nice little detail now this time around is that we have a matching cable. If you picked up the last MacBook Pros and you had Space Gray, the cable wouldn't match, but now it does. Here's a closer look at the cable with the lovely braided cord and the Space Gray connector. Moving along underneath our documentation, which I guess let's, let's go in and see what's in here. Our paperwork, black Apple stickers, love these and our power brick, our 96 watt big boy power brick. We're not done yet though. I also have the studio display. This is going to pair perfectly with the Mac mini. I'm absolutely gonna have a more in-depth look at this MacBook Pro in my full review, so make sure you're subscribed for that. Today though, I'm especially excited to check out the new Mac mini with the studio display. We also have our desktop accessories, magic trackpad, magic keyboard. I love that all these cables are braided. I always end up doubling them as the cable to charge my phone as well. So they're extra durable. There it is. All right, let's get connected and powered on. So I got everything plugged in and all ready to go and I am really loving the setup. If you guys wanna see a more detailed look at it, drop a like and let me know in the comments below. Now this entire video was edited on the new M2 Mac mini and I just got done cutting up the intro and unboxing that you just watched. And the footage here was about the highest possible quality that I can shoot on my a7 IV. It's got a color grade on it, it's unrendered, and it just breezed right through.
Now specs aside, in terms of just feel, I'm used to editing on my M1 Max MacBook Pro and somehow this feels smoother. And I don't know if that's a combination of Ventura with M2, but it's incredible. Now, what I immediately notice, apart from just like timeline smoothness and being able to scrub quickly, zoom in and out, is the waveforms and thumbnail and how quickly they catch up, even just like zooming in and out, but also when you're cutting away, especially with longer footage, this catches up really quickly. And on my M1 Max, it tends to sometimes lag a little bit for those longer clips, but with this, no lag. The other thing going on here is playback and being able to view your project while you're editing in better quality. And this is something that I got used to with my M1 Max MacBook Pro where better performance, I mean, I never had to go to better performance while editing. So I'm gonna hit spacebar to press play. And keep in mind, this is just an upgraded base M2 Mac mini. And it's playing back with no interruptions. We can full screen that. I mean, super smooth no drop frames and keep in mind this is unrendered because i'll usually turn off background rendering for those longer edits but now i'm going to uh, let it render and watch it just rip through that all right that took maybe a minute to render my entire timeline pretty wild the other thing I'll note, the more and more that I use this, for those who have wanted a 27 inch iMac update, this is a great alternative that gives you that power with even more flexibility. Real quick, touching on performance, I ran some initial tests comparing the M2 Mac mini to the M2 Max MacBook Pro, which I haven't even began to push yet, but taking a look at the Mac mini's CPU scores, here's what that looks like. We have the M2 Mac mini's graphics. Looking at the M2 Max MacBook Pro CPU scores, it's not quite double, but pretty much double on the multi-core score. And the graphics is crazy because that's like almost triple of the M2 Mac mini. And I mean, we weren't even like, this was already crazy. So to see that just gets me extra excited to see what I can do on here. Hello, future Crystal here. I actually have a few more performance tests that I ran with the previous versions of these new machines, pretty much one-to-one -one comparisons. So let's take a look at the Mac mini. This is the M1 Mac mini with 16 gigs of memory. So as you can see, there's definitely a jump here where both the single core score and the multi-core score. And if we take a look at the metal score, there's an even bigger jump here. Now I also ran a similar type of comparison with my M1 Max MacBook Pro and the new M2 Max MacBook Pro. And again, this is pretty much a one-to-one -one look here. Really the only differences are storage configurations and the size difference. I use a 14, this is a 16, but really the important thing here to look at is that this is a direct chip comparison, M1 Max versus M2 Max, and they both have 64 gigs of RAM. So let's take a look. With both the single core and a multi-core score here, pretty consistent jump with both of these. It's cool to see a little jump there and an even more significant jump if we look at the metal score, the graphics performance on this new machine is just crazy. Now I just wanna say these M1 to M2 comparisons are purely for your reference. If you're coming from an M1 machine, you definitely don't need to upgrade. As you can see, the performance is still there. Those numbers are still delivering, but it is fun to see how they stack up side by side. And I will say if you're coming from something prior to M1, then it's probably time to take that leap and check out the new lineup. Now, apart from video editing and just everyday browsing, listening to music, another thing that I do a lot with any machine that I use is photo editing. I do have some photo edits to do here with the thumbnails that we shot for this video. So let's hop into Lightroom and Photoshop to make them pop a bit more. But before we do that, I'm also just really appreciating the ability to hop in and out of all these windows at once, especially Final Cut and Photoshop, things like that was not the smoothest experience in the Intel days. But now you can definitely get away with that more. And I mean, like scrubbing through here, going into Lightroom. Yeah, this is nice. We also have a screen recording going on at the same time. So that's also in the mix of everything going on here, but it's going by just fine. It's still handling it like a champ.
I also have stage manager on here. This is a Ventura thing. And once it's toggled on, you can see your windows at a glance at the left here and just hop into anything nice and smoothly. And I mean, like this is just, it's just such a clean way of seeing what you have open and multitasking. I absolutely love it. I also really love it on the studio display because everything is just nice and big and clean while I work. So there's my initial look. I am definitely gonna be using the setup a lot more, but thus far, I gotta say, I'm so impressed. I feel like if you're coming from an Intel machine, this is your time to upgrade, or maybe you're a student looking for a pro level experience with a great deal. This is it. Make sure you stay tuned for the videos coming this week. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hasta luego.